Wow. Johnny oh. Walker rallies for a oh. sensational finish. I'm ready. Now we're gonna see better and better and better every day better. Johnny Walker. Oh, oh, oh. beautiful combinations by Dawkins. Ah. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, you guys just missed, missed Matt putting his shirt on. He was nude when he came in. Jimmy. Oh, that looks delicious. It's for you, Jimmy. It's for me and you. It's a Russell Stover's chocolate heart. Jimmy. Can I tell you, I ate bad on Super Bowl Sunday. I had ice cream cake. I had an ice cream sandwich. I had fucking fried chicken. I pigged out, and now I'm back to my diet. I can't do it, Matt. Did you go to a Super Bowl party? It was a friend's house, yeah. I, I don't even care about the game, but it's just fun to hang out and watch with some friends. Um, you know, I enjoyed that. You don't like Super Bowl? No, it's not. I hate Super Bowl. I try to go to a party before, and I'm just like, yeah, all right. But I like football. Like, I, I don't love it, but I like it. I like it enough to sit through it like the Super Bowl. Like, you know what I mean? If I hated, like, I couldn't watch um, even hockey. I don't, I don't give a shit about hockey, but if it's like a Stanley Cup final game, I can watch it. Um, anyway, I'll, let me turn my heater off. We have uh, Kyle Dawkins, uh today. We also have Johnny Walker, who is a very fun guy to watch. Fight and his uh, Jamal Hill is fighting on Saturday. That's a great fight. Didn't Jamal Hill just fight? Uh, let me see. I believe you're you're correct. Let me see when he fought. Um, yeah, he beat uh, Jimmy Crute. It was December of uh, it was a round one knockout of Jimmy Crute. When um, was that? Uh, December. You're right, Matt. It was December. January, uh, two months. Jimmy, if we ever got into an argument, I'd be like, why you gotta be so rude? Don't you know I'm human too? But that's not really, it doesn't really, it's about a guy trying to get married, that song. That uh, would not apply to us at all. It We're not trying apply to us at all. You're married. I'm not trying to get married. It has nothing to do with us. We're not going to hey, marry each other. But hey, yes, we can get that out of the show. We have Kyle God Dawkins in the in the waiting room. Yeah, let's bring in Kyle Dawkins. Are you you're in Philly right now, or are you out in Vegas? No, I'm I'm, I'm in Vegas. Hotel in Vegas. Where do you live? I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, you do right like in Northeast Philly. Philadelphia. Yeah. Now, what was that like growing? I love Philadelphia. Um, I've done a lot of work down there. It's, it's a great city, but there's a, a real fucking fighters mentality in Philadelphia. There's so many great combat uh, veterans from uh, sports, of course, from, from Pennsylvania. Uh, were you fighting a lot in school? What was it like for you? Honestly, no. Um, throughout grade school and high school and everything like that, I didn't really, I never like pretty much never fought. Um, I always kind of went the opposite direction when uh, any, you know, fighting would occur. Uh, I would always watch, but I would never like partake in any of it. Um, I was a very like introverted kid. I was very, you know, kept to myself, um, a little bullied a little bit throughout grade school and high school a little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't know where this fighting thing came from, but it's just, it's just me growing up, I guess. How did, when did you start training? I started training when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, my brother had found the gym um, when I was about 15 or 16 years old. Uh, my brother found the gym. I strictly like went right into MMA, but he started in jujitsu. Um, but my whole goal was was the UFC. Like seeing the UFC, I wanted to do that and wanted to obviously you know get there. Um, but I realized how important jujitsu was, so obviously I jumped over to the gi classes and everything, and, and just kind of jumped, uh, just kind of did both of those um but yeah i started when i was a sophomore in high school and uh just took off ever since and um was there any uh and, you, and your brother is uh is he still on uh on the uh, police department in philly oh uh, he actually just finished i think it was in december before his fight he um he is i officially retired he is yeah cause it's tough i think uh was it trevin giles was a cop in houston am i thinking of the right uh 
I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, try a tough double duty because you know, police work is just so fucking grueling. Was there ever a temptation for you to be a cop? Did you ever think of it? Uh, yeah, there was. My dad is a, is a, is a cop, um, in Philadelphia. Um, so growing up, I always wanted to be the police officer as well. Um, but then as I got older, I kind of got away from that. Um, I never really liked school and I never really like, liked, uh, seeing the, the, the cop side that my dad was, um, as far as like working so much and everything like that. And, um, I saw what it did to my brother as well and how, um, it obviously made him different mentally as a person. So I didn't really want to kind of jump into that either. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny. A friend of mine, it was a detective and he retired years ago, but he said it's hard now because there's cameras everywhere. He goes, you know, you used to be able to pull over, take a nap. He's like, you can't do that shit <laughs> yeah. anymore. Everybody's videotaping you now. You can't do anything. There's cameras everywhere. You can't even sleep anymore. No. <laughs> you can't even mount anybody who's, who's aggressive. Yeah. Back then it was a little bit, uh, I guess a little bit different, but now it's every single move, you know, you're getting, Oh yeah. Now, what, what uh, is your dad? Uh, is he a detective or what rank did, is your dad? Uh, he's, he's a, I believe he's a lieutenant in the SWAT unit in uh, Philadelphia. So. Oh, okay. So he's, he's handling yeah. high, high pressure shit. Yeah. 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 yeah he, he loves all that stuff. He used to, now he, I think now he's like, uh, takes a little bit of like a step back from the position, but uh, before when he was like dead set and like in the SWAT unit, actually in the SWAT unit, he was always the first guy in um, to the house with a shield. So the guy that broke the door down and carried the shield, and that was my dad. So he wow. was obviously in the thick of it. The Dawkins family is probably a very hard family because no one has better stories than fighters and cops. Like they're always the most yeah, interesting guy right. at the table, and your whole family is one of the two or both. So yeah, I would hate to sit there and try to entertain that family. You guys probably have a very high bar for a good story. They do. They do. I I'm, I sit there and just kind of watch them talk all the time. But yeah, they do. I would love to see Jimmy at the table with all of you, and you tell them. <laughs> stories of fighting and your brother and then your father going through first with the fucking shield and then Jimmy would be like oh wait one time at yuck yucks I got a, a <laughs> oh I would I would they would all be silent I would be like you don't know the waitress was trying to quiet them down and she couldn't yeah my story <laughs> my stories would not hold up <laughs> so it wouldn't match up yeah <laughs> yeah no not at all hey, but listen, Jimmy I was just gonna say no this fight with um Jamie Pickett. No, no, Kevin Holland. I think he got. I think he got screwed with that, man. I mean, listen, nobody tried to headbutt each other. You had a clash. Yeah. I mean, it happens when you're fighting, but you're fighting. I mean, it's not like one guy. And I can understand if you're like, ah, you fucking headbutted him. You're you're clashing with each other. I got this motherfucker yeah. right here. I got fifty stitches right here from doing that with Lytle. They didn't stop the fucking fight. But I mean, it might stun him. But you took advantage of that. There was no cheap shots. What the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's I don't know. I think the rule set, the rules that they had changed now, doesn't really make sense with the replay and everything like that. You can't, you can't have a fight like that happen and then show a replay and then take it away from the decision that you made. Was that big? The, the, the refs, the refs decision. Yeah, yeah, it was. Big Dan. Yeah, is not very decisive. He's a fucking nice guy, but a nervous nilly. He's not exactly hurting in there. Oh, Jim, trust me. Something like that happens, and yeah, yeah. Hey, guy, Mark Ratna, somebody, somebody help me. Throw me a line. What do you think, Herb? Oh, fuck, dude, make a goddamn decision, dude. He, he, he told, he, he actually told me in the corner, man. He told me in the corner, man, like after the fight, like before everything kind of happened, that he was going to leave it as it, leave the decision as it was that I won by submission, just based off of the way that Holland, uh, had recovered from it. He said that's why he let the fight keep going was because of the way he recovered. But then they threw the replay up and all the other stuff happened and it just went downhill. Yeah, that's frustrating. So, that's very frustrating. Yeah. I um I don't mind re I like seeing replay because it can overcome certain human error and like you know, hey look if, if you have to make a quick decision on whether or not a guy got need uh, was his hand touching the mat? Wasn't it? Was his knee? Like, I mean, that could make or break a, a win or a yeah. loss for somebody and, and, and make sure somebody isn't robbed. But yeah, there are certain things you want to see the ref just kind of, what can't you ask for on replay? Like something like that, you can, like if it's, if it's one of those things that's going to uh, change the outcome of the fight, what can't you ask for on replay? I don't know. Is there I, any, guess, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, is there anything that you like in, in, in certain, like say football, I think penalties or not called penalties, you can't ask for unless the ref calls for it. I, I don't, I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, there could be like a like a. I guess they could implement a challenge now for for corner men. I guess in between rounds, that could be different. I mean, if they have a replay, then they can they should be able to obviously challenge in a way. But I think it just it takes away from the sport now. It's it's getting too too. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's getting too like judgmental for corners and 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 referees and stuff. But I think that the referees should just be stern and just stick to what they what they decide. My, my thing is, why why I, I know you got Jamie Pickett. This and you got your hand, you got a plate uh, set. Why? Why did you guys run it back with you and Kevin Holland? Why did that seems like the natural thing to, to occur? Weren't you supposed to? Why didn't we? Yeah, yeah we were heard. To, so we were scheduled. Yeah, we were scheduled to fight on the third or on the thirteenth of November again after the fight had happened. Um, and then he had an injury, and then they told me that um they were looking at February to reschedule for us, and I said okay. And then the next contract that I got was Marquez to fight in February. So it wasn't um, uh, uh, Holland, but obviously, but like from, from the things that I've read and the things that I've seen, you know, he had an ankle injury that occurred. Um, but then he, they were talking about him fighting uh, Nick Diaz and all that stuff at 170. And then they started mouthing off saying that he was going to move to 170. So in my opinion, if I was on him, I would drop down too. If I'm going to fight somebody like Diaz on my first fight in 170, you know, if people are talking about that, then there's, I, I understand the reasoning why he would, you know, take, pick the 170 fight as opposed to my fight. Yeah, that's a big jump down, though. I mean, that, that's yeah. a that's a lot of weight. I mean, that's a yeah. But uh, I think I think he he's 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 a very light 85er in a way. I think he only walks around like 195 pounds, if that. And a lot of these Walter weights now are walking around that 200 pounds. So I think that's why he's making the move down. Yeah, and you wonder too because uh, he lost to. Uh, to, to Brunson and to uh, uh, Vittori. And you wonder yeah. if guys at that weight who are good at laying on you and pressing you up against the cage are presenting a problem just because that extra, like you said, that 10 pounds might be actually hurting him. Yeah, because after he rehydrates, he only rehydrates back up to 95, where as a guy like me, I rehydrate back up to 205, 210 the next day in the cage. So I, you have another significant advantage in the uh, weight. I'm always curious too, do, do fighters, because I know there's been talk about it both ways. Some guys like to fight close to their weight because they don't want to deplete during a cut. Um, and, and do you feel like you're fully energized when you have to fight, like after putting all that weight back on? Yeah, yeah. I try not to get too heavy, obviously, after um, my rehydrations and everything like that and eating. Um, I do eat a little bit lighter on fight day. Uh, I mainly focus on fluids just to get up there. But um, the heaviest I've ever been back into the cage, I think was maybe 208, I think, but um, I feel good right around 205 because that's what I walk around at a majority of my fight camps is like 205, 206. So I feel great at that weight and, and I've always felt great at that weight ever since I moved down the middleweight. Shit, man, I'm so happy to be under 200 recently. <laughs> when I get over 200, when I get like 210, I'm a little ball. But anyway. Oh, it's the height, right? It's the height. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey, I'm reading this now. Talk about a rough month. Did you know that Kevin Holland was briefly arrested due to unpaid fucking parking tickets? In, in Texas, yeah. <laughs> what I heard fuck? that, yeah. I did hear that, too. It's only after he, he had that fight with you. So the poor guy gets headbutted, choked, fucking, and, oh, man, things can't possibly get worse. He gets arrested for the, <laughs> what do you? Yeah, how many fucking fight bonuses did he get? You can't pay your fucking tickets? Guys, come on, man. I had this on my brother. My brother had to call people in Houston to get them. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. Oh, man. really? <laughs> uh, dude, talk about a rough fucking month, man. Oh, man. I, I just read that. I didn't know about that. So, <laughs> hey, what what is that thing, too? Because I, I saw your Instagram. You were doing some meal plan where you order food. Um, do you do that just as you're leading up to a fight or is that how you eat most of the time where you have them prepare meals and bring them? Yeah. So, um, I work with a place called performance meal prep. That's just like a locally Philly based, um, meal prep company that, um, really has kind of, they've worked with like the Philadelphia Eagles, a couple of the, a couple of the six as well. Um, so we linked up with the guy, Jesse, and, uh, it's been great. He, he like drops food off at our house, um, once a week. So we have food for the whole week and I've been doing that for this whole camp. Um, obviously, you know, the fight being at a catch weight, I won't need to uh, like restrict my calories as much. So I could have, I could have eaten a lot. I, I actually ate a lot more this time, but yeah, they've been hooking me up and it's been great. Um, but I am somebody that's kind of strict on my nutrition uh, when I am in camp. 
uh, from like 10 to 12 weeks out. I don't like go out, I don't eat pizza, I don't drink beer, I don't do anything like that. I'm, I'm just like straight edge and just focus on uh, losing the weight and, and fighting. It's in the right mindset, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, channel, that too. Channeled in when you're not having that beer and pizza, you know? That's yeah, what, you know, yeah, but afterwards it's crazy. different. It has to be a sacrifice, don't you think? That has to be some yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, you know? there does, yeah. Hey, Kyle, I was going to just ask, Jimmy, just to get to know you a little bit better, you married, single, what do you like to do when you're not? When you're not fighting, what's yours? What's yours? I have a fiance. I recently, I recently got engaged um, in May Congrats. of uh, this year. Thank you, thank you. So uh, last year, sorry, last year, May of last year. Um, yeah. So I have a fiance. We have a dog. Uh, we're gonna get married um, next April, April twenty three. So we have a, a wedding plan for April twenty three. So yeah. I saw a picture of her wearing, like, did she fight at all or train? Because I saw one of the pictures. She was wearing some. Uh, it looked like a gym shirt or a train, a, a shirt. Uh, it was either a gym or a, a training shirt or something. I was wondering if she trained. No, she's just a, she, she, I mean, she doesn't train uh, MMA runner. So she does a lot of like marathons and triathlons. Oh, okay. She tries to do triathlons at least. Um, but yeah, she's big into that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what all of her workout clothes are and all that stuff that oh, she's wearing okay. is from. Let's name something yeah. else, Jimmy, on your Instagram. Hey, Jimmy, you're stalking this guy. Uh, no, but he's creeping on me. He's creeping on me, man. You should, if you're, you, you, you learn about people's lives. Instagram is a lot more telling than Twitter because on Instagram, people are kind of just showing you their life as opposed to just posting opinions. So you can kind of see what they do from day to day. It's interesting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. As you, as you dork, fucking, uh, the, the fucking, uh, what's his name? Spot. I don't know. Jimmy, you see spot on his fucking Instagram. I don't no, know. but I did his see. Judge. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you. Judge. I did see a picture on your Instagram of you, th uh, of you like, uh, Ready to hit the mitts? Ooh. I'm just gonna keep naming stuff I see on Instagram. Now I'm just gonna scroll up. <laughs> I just checked it out beforehand. But I wanted to ask you about that meal plan because I'm so fucking lazy. I don't want to cook. But I saw that they were Philadelphia based. So I was gonna kind of wonder if they do they ship to New Yorkers only in Philly. Uh, no, they ship anywhere. They, they, oh. they, I think they've been shipping everywhere now. So and they're local from Philly. So if you're not too far, I'm sure they could just run up and drop it off. But okay. I'm sure they'll mail it to you. They, they do mail it as well. I've seen that they mail it as well. So. Just hit them up, and uh, I'm sure they'll get you food. This is that all these questions from Jimmy are strictly just for himself because he's a very recently he's a former fatty, and now he's all happy that he's in shape. So he wants to see he wants all the secrets. That's right. You ask. You have to. We've ask, all been there. We've all been there. You ask questions you want the answers to. That's what I. That's whenever right. I'm I, if, if I'm ever interviewed by somebody, I want them to ask me things that I that they want to know because they're usually going to be more engaged. Well, you're not asking me this, but I'm just going to just give you the information. What my wife and I are watching, and I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Kyle, but I want to. I want to give him some before I just ask and keep taking. I like to give. Sure. Me and my wife, we're watching Peacemaker on HBO Max, which is okay. John Cena as the the super yeah. peacemaker. Very fun, Jimmy. It's a very fun show. I've never heard of it. Well, maybe you should Google it. But uh, Peacemaker on HBO Max, and we're also also watching Ozark, the fourth season. Which is always disturbing and fun. Yeah, that's what we're watching. What are you and your fiance watching, buddy? Tell us. I know you're watching something. Uh, we're watching uh, right now. We're watching The Servant. It's on Apple TV. It's uh, something new, Jimmy. Is what I'm talking. It's pretty about. good. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's an M Night Shyamalan um, film that was in Philly. So it, it's a. It's a series, actually, a series. I should oh. say. Um, but it's it's wild. Like this this woman is like so so just to like, give you the gist of the story. Yeah. Um, a woman and, a, and her husband uh, like are just like taking care of the kid, taking care of their, their baby that they have. Um, and they hire a servant to help them take care of the kid. And they finally show you the kid and the kid is a baby doll. And you're like, wait a minute, why is the kid a baby doll? So here they're like, something happened prior, like trauma prior that she needed to cope and she needed a baby doll and she thinks the baby doll is real. But then one day, the dad hears cries in the crib and goes over and there's a real baby there. So now it's like a whole oh. mind blowing thing. Like did she pay, turn the doll real or what's going on? But it's a, it's a wild, wild show. What's the name of it and where is it? That sounds pretty interesting. The servant. And it's okay. on, it's on Apple TV. Okay. I'm not getting jealous of Kyle or anything, but I mean, Jimmy, I bring up stories and movie shows all the time and never once did you say, Ooh, I might give that a try. Hey, Kyle brings <laughs> up one, he brings up one show. 
I brought, how many shows have I brought up over the damn years? And you never once said, you always are like this, ready? How about this, ready? Does this look familiar? Ugh. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> Here's why. Because a, a lot of times they are, I, I've already seen Ozark. I didn't like season one. I didn't hate it, but I've already watched that. So I did watch that. And a lot of what you bring up is superhero stuff. And I don't, Jimmy, they got capes. And a lot of that, I'm not. <laughs> why are you going to embarrass me in front of Kyle? He's a new friend. Why are you going to bring up about me and my love of superheroes? It's adult superhero stuff. I was going to watch <laughs> Dune because of you. I haven't watched it yet, but Dune you got me psyched good. about. That's very good as well. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, great. You like it, Kyle? If you like it, I'll watch it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I like okay. it. Oh, here we go. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm almost, I think I might be a little obsessed with that movie. That's my favorite movie of 2021. Jimmy. Okay. Yeah. That's a high ball. You know I'm a movie guy. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Josh Brodin was amazing in that movie as a yeah. trainer how about that kyle yeah as a yeah trainer, that's actually yeah he did great right yeah. it was good it was good i enjoyed it i didn't like the ending of it. i kind of just ended but it's good it was good yeah i will watch it i've been meaning to but it's a long film right that's why i think i needed a couple hours yes yeah i think it's yeah it's pretty long I think it's like myself, three hours. myself and paul atreides we had us we fought the same guy at the end I had a grappling match. See the guy at the end? Hey, I swear to God, Kyle. I had a grappling match. He's an actor. Remember the guy he fought at the end? The uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 I forgot his name in the show, but black guy. Yeah. Uh, Jack. Uh, yeah, man. I had a jiu-jitsu match with him a while ago. Oh, really? And I dropped Sayanagi on his ass. Sorry. Same shit, Jimmy. The same thing on my Instagram today. That's what I hit that guy with. And he fought Paul Atreides. Paul Atreides is the house of the Atreides family. I mean, he carries the fucking flag. Kyle knows what I'm talking about. Well, I, I can't see it now yeah. because I've been scolded about Instagram. I can't check your Instagram. Or I would have hopped right over there. <laughs> Nick, I think you knew everything about his Instagram. Listen, this is so much fun. Kyle, when, now when is the, is the fight this, the fight's this weekend? Yeah, the fight's this Saturday. Yeah, I'm actually here in Vegas, so I'm here. So. Do you like the Apex Center compared to the crowd? I know you probably get asked that a lot, but I honestly I haven't fought in front of a crowd yet. So all I know is the Apex. I've I I was yeah, I was signed of June of, of twenty twenty, I believe, and then it's just been Apex ever since. I've had five fights in the UFC and they've all been at the Apex. I have not fought, fought in front of the fans. I've only been in front of the fans when my brother fought. That was it. I think it's good though, because I think there's so many events held at the apex. I, I mean, a lot of them, they would have held in front of crowds, but I think we're seeing more events than we would have seen. So you yeah. probably get more fights than you would have got. Like, I think it kind of works out for fighters because uh, a lot more shit can happen and a lot more things in the rankings can happen because uh, you don't have to wait for a pay-per-view or, you know, a fight night uh, at a location. They can do whatever they want at the apex whenever they want to do it. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's a, it's a great, it's a great thing that they've done that they've built. And, um, I think that they should, I think they should keep it like this, like the fight nights, but they should have like bigger fight nights, I guess it should be in front of front of fans, but I'm looking forward to that, that one, that one fight. I, the first fight I get in front of the fans and I'm sure it's, it's going to be uh, pretty crazy. Well, you're fighting uh, Jamie Pickett on Saturday. Um, look, man, thank you for joining us again. Uh, you're always fun to talk to and uh, come back again after the fight and, and we'll talk to you before your next one. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. We have uh, Johnny Walker coming up in just a moment, uh, part of the main event, five-round fight with uh, Jamal Hill. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. That this, this came out of nowhere, I feel. I, 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 I did not hear about this. It's the main event. Yeah. Shit. And I like me some Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill is looking fucking great. This is this. Holy shit, Jimmy. It's hitting me now. This is a great fight. Yeah, Jamal Hill uh, has looked what is his right? I think he only has one loss. I know he has a one no contest because of some fucking marijuana nonsense. Um, Ooh, I had some of that today. Did you really? What? Hold on. I don't know, Jimmy, but let, let me see, buddy. I let me see. In my head. You do that, I'll entertain the fans. I write these things down and then, I, oh, yeah, he's got one loss, one no contest. Um, oh, for oh, oh, with a Brayo for uh, fucking marijuana. It's so frustrating when you see a guy lose a win over marijuana i like him better now how about that so jimmy tell me about your friend your um your 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 character edgar edgar um has very dry teeth and a very tiny little mouth and people hate him he's hated how do you make your mouth more tiny when you do that 
I don't do it. It's, it's he's a different person than me. It's not me. Oh, oh, yeah. Can we meet him? Edgar Mellencamp. He's on oh, Twitter. First of all, is he? Is there any relation when you say Mellencamp? No. There's no relation to another Mellencamp. Yes, there is. Eugene, his older brother Eugene. <laughs> so Eugene Mellencamp and Edgar, yeah. Okay. What he's is on it? Twitter. What's that? Guess? He's on Twitter. I don't. Is he on Instagram? No. Well, maybe we should make that move because you know I'm not on Twitter. Well, you can always look on Twitter just to see him. I don't even know. Dude, I've been, I, when I remove something from my thing, I don't even know how to look back on shit. No, you just look it up on Google. Oh, and what's his name? Edgar what? Mellencamp. Edgar Mellencamp. Trust me, there's, there's only one. one. instrument, this one. Yeah. yeah. So, Jimmy, yes, I don't buddy. know if I've given you the, why are you smiling? Just because of how awful Edgar is. <laughs> I, I, I want. It, would I like him? You think? You know? I. Yeah, you'd like him. Doug Bell. I kind of had a. I kind of. Oh, well, he's so fucking cringy. But, but he is. Uh, you like Doug? Interesting. Okay. What were you going to ask me? Well, I was going to ask you. Like sometimes people like <clears throat> when you finish a series, right? Excuse me. Mm. They want to know your review of it. Sure. For myself, I finished. Ready? Look. Look at the camera. Uh, you finished uh, Bob Fett. <laughs> well, first of all, it's it's Boba Fett. And you don't make Boba short for Bob. You don't. don't <laughs> it, it works. First of all, can I tell you something right now? Bobby Fett. You're being a little disrespectful. Nobody in the history of Star Wars called him Bob Fett. They don't, they don't call him Bob or Bob. How about Fetty? <laughs> now, he is a, he is a ruthless um, um, bounty hunter. Oh. But now he's becoming a crime lord in the book of Boba Fett. And, you know, my thought on the series. And Frank Trigg, by the way, he died. The, the Gamorrean guard that he was playing got pushed over. Oh, Frank Trigg was in it. I didn't realize. Yes. And he died. You know, his end in that was almost as bad as his end when he fought. Never mind. Listen to me. He, he just, it didn't work out for him. In the, in the mm. Is it, wait, I think I saw this. Bob, uh, is I think I even saw an ad for it for this, uh, where they said Boba Fett, bounty hunter, the quicker picker upper. Don't ever say that again. Yo, <laughs> listen, Johnny Walker. Joke Stockton. Ah, Johnny, Johnny Walker. After we talk to the great Johnny Walker, who's fighting Jamal Hill this weekend in the main event, after we speak to him, yes, we're gonna get my review of the book. A Boba Fett series that's on Disney Plus. Let's go, Johnny Walker. Hey, Johnny. What's up, my friend? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. You made some pretty good picks for 271. Um, I, I picked. Uh, I picked Brunson. I picked Whitaker, and I picked Lewis. I did a, a completely wrong. What made you pick uh, Tuivasa? I thought that was a really smart pick. Who, me? Yeah, yeah, you. You picked uh, Tai Tuivasa at, at, uh, uh, at 271, your picks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, because I know he's, he moved better and, and he's more active. Like, Derek's really have big knockout power, right? But he don't move as Tuivasa. He's, he waits a little bit more. He's a little bit more lazy, but big, big punch. And Tuivasa go to the punch and go a little bit more active, more war. Like he's more like a warrior, you know. Then I said, uh, between these two, I think Tuivasa is, is gonna beat Derek Lewis. Yeah, I was amazed he could take the punches he took too. Like he took some really hard shots. Those are shots that would put most guys out, and Tuivasa took them. And it, like normally, he would you wouldn't get that far with Derek Lewis. Yeah, yeah, he have a really good chin. Like he's he's such a good heavyweight, you know. And I think he's gonna he gonna be doing really good on the, the on the top five there. And now maybe he can be close to the title shot as well. So it's going to be fun that the next heavyweight fights on, on, to watch, you know? Uh, this is your uh, second your second main event fight in a row. That's exciting. Do you prefer that the main event or you, what's the difference? Or I should say, what do you like? What's the difference between fighting in the main event and fighting earlier on? I mean, what do, what do you feel is the For me, actually, to be honest, I have no different. It's everything's porrada, my friend. It's gonna be a war. It's gonna be hard, you know. And doesn't matter if you may event or the first fight. It's no easy at all. Makes no difference for me. It's just I just have more time to chill, you know, and I'm gonna to recover my weight because it's gonna be the only difference for me is I recover more my weight, you know. Can have more meals and 
uh, actually make better my time is that, you know, to warm me up and, and I know when I'm going to fight. So the only difference for me is this because psh, it's just harder as the first fight, you know. Oh, harder. That, tell Jimmy what that means, uh, in days, please. Well, hard is like punch, like means like boom, for hard, everyday for hard, my friend. And then, so when I hear my Brazilian friends say, Bojada, Boja, what does Boja mean? Boja is like, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy, Boja. I like so, And I think, Johnny, you've had, have you had, am I wrong, two decisions you fought to? I wanted to ask how you felt. By the end of round five, because um, you went the, uh, the decision, it didn't go your way, but you still, you went the five rounds. Um, and, and how did it feel at the end of the fourth and end of the fifth round? I was feeling really good. Like I knew uh, it was a close fight because I knew I didn't and I, I wasn't making enough to win the fight. I broke my foot on the third round, like I tear two ligaments that slowed me down a little bit. And um, I was just happy to make it like, Five round, the main, my first main event. I was just happy to be there, you know, and I was so excited. Like, oh, I have finished five rounds, good. I know I can fight two, three more rounds if I want. I, I still have gas, and so it was a good experience for me that tests me a little bit. So I get a lot of experience from that fight, and I, I wasn't expect the result like I, I lost, right? But I don't really care. I just was well, happy to be there and make the five rounds. Okay. Because I'm building my character, myself, my career, you know, and my first five rounds, first main event was a good experience for me. I, I just was happy to be there, you know. Now, let me ask you, Johnny, you're still you're still working with the great John Canava, Kavanaugh from uh, SPG? Yes, sir. Now, SBG, I should say. Uh, now, straight blast, Jim. Now, let me ask you, a lot of, a, a lot of Brazilians, not Henzo, Henzo ended up on the East Coast, but a lot of Brazilians, they're coming over here and they're like, all right, look, Florida, California. They like the sun. How do you end up in gloomy Ireland? And what's the, how, how long are you there for a camp? And what's that like the, the living from, go, from going from living in Brazil to, to Ireland? Yeah, it's a good place to live. The weather is terrible. I don't like rain. It's very clown, but have good food, good people there. And I really miss the sun. But <laughs> it's the you know, sun. But the thing, look, she just passed behind me. I was following this girl. Oh, <laughs> there for the woman. Oh, that's great. Is it gloomy? I was only there for like two days in Dublin, and it was like it was gloomy and cloudy, and that's why Irish people are very, uh, very, they're, you know, kind of always a little bit pessimistic. And I think it's because of the the shit weather. It's like that all the time there. Not really. Uh, all of my Irish friends, they are really happy. They're, I think, if they have sun like everywhere in the world have like a sunny place they will be the happiest people in the world because with that weather, they still make jokes and be good mood. Imagine if they have sun, you know? It's really, actually, it's a right. really good mood there. So Jimmy's Jimmy's just probably thinking of Connor yelling about grabbing his pickaxe. Jimmy, they're not always like that. At no, I'm Irish. I'm Irish. My family's Irish. Oh. You know, I, I, we're not from, I don't, born in Ireland, but we're Irish heritage, so I, I get it. And I don't know many, many uh, upbeat Irish people. Well, you're, I'm not going to point to you. No, I'm not upbeat at all. I get it. I'm upbeat. very Irish. You could be a little gloom and doom. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Johnny. So listen, when you're in there, so wait, how long are you, li are you living in Ireland? How long are you? Yeah, two years right now. Holy shit. <coughs> and and so, what, what, so much. Besides going to pubs, because I know you're not doing that too much. What are we, what, what are we doing? We're not fighting. What, what, what do we got going on over there? Me? Yeah, you, not Jimmy. I don't want to know what the fuck Jimmy does. <laughs> Bro, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm, um, I'm in my, I'm in the point of my life now that I don't care of nothing else than my career. You know, yeah. I start my prime now. I don't want to go pub. I don't want to go party. I just want to train, eat, sleep, repeat. I don't care in any other place in the world that I am. If it rains, if it's sunny, I just want to train, eat, sleep, repeat. And now I'm feeling really good, great. You know, I'm committed to myself. The next five, six years, I'm going to be committed to 100% of my career. It's what I'm doing. I don't care where I am, what I'm doing. Just eat, train, sleep, repeat every day. Did yeah. you know you... Uh, you I'm going to ask, only because we're on this subject still. Sure. Like, being the explosive fighter that you are and, and, and the prospect, everybody, when you came on the scene, everybody, oh my goodness. What made you go to John Kavanaugh? How did that even happen? 
out of everybody. Yeah, I, I, I've been through a lot of different gyms. You know, I was in Thailand, in Montreal, Fira Zahab, in Russia. Then uh, I stopped with John. John is a really good coach. He's very smart. And, and with all of the experience that I have around, I know he's teaching something truly, you know, that's... I like him as well as a coach and as a person. So he, he helped me, he supports me, you know, and he teach me like things, no magic is just, you know, the proper thing that's gonna work, you know, like crazy stuff, you know, like the proper thing is gonna work on the fight, the things that are gonna use, you know, and he don't mind if you wanna go to Thailand, do a little training camp with Thai guys, you know, and he's really open mind and he improved my game a lot, my Jiu Jitsu, my wife's my takedown defense, my takedowns. So every day after training, he's still one, two hours after finish the professional training to teach you to take the doubts out, you know, like if people ask something, then, okay, do that, this, do that, you know, it's really, he want to see the success of his fighters, you know, and this is, this is what I think I feel at home as well. Yeah. And by, and judging by your, like you just said, like you went to five rounds and you felt good afterwards. That's got to give you confidence going into this, knowing that if you have to go five, you can do it. Like when you looked at Francis, the first time he went five with Stipe, he was exhausted by the end of it. And then recently against Gon, you could see he paced himself a little bit differently. He was more comfortable going into later rounds. Do you think you would pace yourself any differently at, at this point? Like, even though you made it through those five, is there any pacing stuff that you would do differently this time? Yeah. Bro, a, I have so much experience today, right? And then one of the big things is a nutritionist. Nutrition, you know? If you do the nutrition really proper, you're going to fill up with the glycogen on the proper time. You cut the weight easy. So I've been, I'm doing diet all year. I'm ready to cut my weight anytime. So I always eating healthy. And this is make my feel for the fight, you know? Then I know I'm going to have good feel. I know my, 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 how my body can go. And I know how can how hard I can push, so I'm happy to do whatever I want to do. You know, during the fight, I don't I'm not scared to get tired. And I have good condition in any situation, the ground game, takedowns or striking or whatever they need to use. You know, I'm trained and I'm confident, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna have just fun tomorrow, and I'm gonna finish the fight. Do you watch? Fight Good tape. Tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> you can't wait to get in there. Do, do you watch fight tape? Did you watch Jamal Hill's last fight? Or do yeah. the coaches watch that and tell you what's going on? I watch all of his fights. I know what he likes to do, his style, his soft power, you know. And Jimmy Crute, I think I was, Jimmy was a little bit slowly on that fight. You, you can see he kick a little bit, lazy kick, and he don't move really good. I don't know what happened for me. He's just having a bad day. But he's a, actually, he's a good fighter, you know, but it's, I think it wasn't his day that day. And Jamal get the most of it. Uh, Jamal's a really good fighter as well. So, but now he's going to face me. Yeah. I'm unpredictable. I'm explosive. I'm strong. I'm probably I'm the biggest on the, this division just because I'm fight, still fighting light heavyweight. I have good reach. Have, I'm tall. I'm explosive. I have power. And he's going to have trouble. This is what I'm talking about, Jimmy. Jimmy, this is what I'm talking about. See, this is the difference. A warrior's mindset is what we got here, Jimmy. If Jim, look, for example, Johnny, if Jimmy seen that last fight of Jamal Hill and knew he had to go in there, Jimmy might, Jimmy might actually cry. He might cry and say he's gonna hurt me and I don't want to go in. And but you, you, Johnny Walker, you go ah, not up in here. That he might have did that. He's not doing that. So, he's not doing that to me. Am I right or am I wrong? Bro, I was born to do this. L listen, I, I supposed to die a long time ago. I have a, a bad disease when I was younger. I have a meningitis, you know. If you meningitis, why doesn't that make your brain swell up? What does that do? Yeah, to you? yeah. I I should die. I'm doing extra time on the earth. I have nothing to lose, my friend. That's you amazing. Wait, what happened with that? Tell us the story, please. I was, I think, five years old. I spent like six or nine months on the hospital briefing with machines and stuff trying to survive this disease when i was i think five or six do you know how you so, got it I, I i there's different ways you can get it right i have no idea i was five years old it just i just didn't remember that i spent a lot of time in the hospital so that's a great attitude you have you look at it like hey this is all gravy like i, I i've been to kind of this very deadly place and i survived it so this is all just kind of fun borrow time yeah <laughs> i just want to be happy and do my best on this extra chance that i have you know hey listen johnny walker i see you there with your fiance your girlfriend your wife is your wife 
Yes, my fiance. What I want to marry on December 1st. Oh, dude, that's a beautiful thing. I love it. And I'm a married man too, husband and a father. Now listen, what are you guys watching on Netflix? We like to get, we like to find out what couples watch. Like Jimmy likes that 90 day fiance. Like what do you like to watch? Before? We, we watch Derek. He's a, he's a nice. Uh, Derek? British. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Derek, Afterlife. You should sure love show? it. Harry I heard Potter. about that show. Yeah, it's nice. It, what does it mean, Derek of, Gift of Life? Is he dead? No, there are two different after, shows. After Derek and another, It's oh. another show that, that, that uh, Ricky Gervais do. Oh, it's a good show, though, Afterlife. Yeah, it's great. I haven't seen season three yet. Have you seen the most recent season? Yeah, I finished it all. It's nice. Oh, finished. It's good, yeah. I Make you cry, bro. Three. Make you realize a uh, life, you know? Where could I watch that? Where could I watch Netflix. I want to cry. It's very good. Derek is, I, I'm sorry. Derek is good. Uh, Afterlife is new. That's really good. What's Derek about? It's just, a, it's a character he plays kind of a special needs guy. Um, he did two seasons and I think he works, I forget where he works, but it's, it's a nice show too. Oh, well, yeah, he good? works in a, in a care, old people house. Old people care, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, very you, like, good. you like the action movies and stuff like that, John? Of course. Uh, my favorite movies of Avengers, you know, I like Spider Man, Avengers. I could have started off with this. I'm a superhero in real life, my friend. Oh, I'm yeah, we both are. Me and yes. you and Jimmy's all one of us, a sidekick. <laughs> That's right. I'm, your little, I'm, I'm the guy that drives the superhero, and I have your cape cleaned. <laughs> Listen, what's your favorite? What is your favorite? Look, you look like a fucking superhero. Jesus. What is your favorite? What do you like? Who's your main superhero that you like watching? Uh, I like Iron Man, but they, they, they kill him on the Avenger, bro. He's so such a fun guy, you know? He was, he was funny. He had the wit. Robert really Downey Jr. Funny. And he have no, like, actually superpower. He's just smart and have money and can build everything around him, you know? Yeah. It's like Elon Musk. Yeah, but it's fun. But fine, yeah. All right, well, look, good luck, um, Jamal Hill. This is a great fight. Um, yeah, everyone is looking forward to this fight. This is a great main event. And um, I'm, I'm happy for you that you got another main event. And uh, we'll definitely talk to you afterwards, Johnny. And uh, thanks for coming on, as always. And, and good luck against uh, Jamal Hill this Saturday night at the Apex. No problem, my friend. Thank you very okay. much. Have Peace a great fight. Take care of yourself. Take care, buddy. But I feel pretty. I feel pretty. I feel pretty and witty. And all right, let's party, Jimmy. Listen, what do we got? Um, you, you, whichever one you want to start with, I will start with. I think there's a difference because we ran out of pods downstairs with my espresso and espresso, whatever. My wife did the old school fucking little espresso thing, the little tea kettle type thing. And let me tell you, I'm fucking flying right now. You are, right? A salute. Back to business, Jimmy. I love you. Jimmy, what would I do without my Jimmy in my life? Probably have, probably enjoy it more. <laughs> I, dude, I'd be like, oh, I can't believe Jimmy's that. Who's the new co-host? I got to pay my bills. I'm only, <laughs> Jimmy, I'm only fucking, I would miss you so much. Um, where do you want to start from? Um, Top one, two, three. Main event, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen. I like me some Johnny Walker, I do. But yes. the Mall Hill's the damn truth. He's so accurate. I know, I know you're like, well, what about Paul Craig? Yeah, he learned from that shit. Learned from it. Uh, he's coming. He's coming in hot. Second round knockout, Jamal Hill. I don't, I don't, I know you're thinking I'm crazy. No, I don't think you're crazy. You no, know? please don't be so rude, you know. But I, mean, I think it's going to be a, a second round knockout by Jamal Hill. He's fucking accurate, Jimmy. Yeah, he is. Accurate. I'm going to take. Um, what? I'm going to take uh, Jamal Hill third round stoppage. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, Walker is very dangerous and he has gone five. It's hard to pick against him. But he's lost three out of four and I'm not sure why. Um, doesn't mean he can't win, but Jamal Hill has looked really good lately and that no contest is frustrating for him. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to take, uh, I'll take Hill in the third. How about Kyle Dawkins against Jamie Pickett? That's a very good fight. You know what? 
Uh, I think this Kyle Dark is, is, is ready uh, to, you know, explode on this scene. He was ready with, with Kevin Holland, and it got taken from him by Big Dan. Fuck that up. But I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Kyle Dock is by uh, decision because Jamie Pickett's not getting out of there easy. Okay. I'm going to say, uh, I was going to take Dock is by decision, but you're taking him. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take Dock is by decision. I, I, that was my first instinct. And uh, let's just go to the third fight. Parker Porter against Alan uh, Bodeau. Porter is a fun fighter to watch. He had a, a, a nice win over uh, Chase Sherman last time out in uh, August. I'm going to take Parker Porter by second round stoppage. You know what? I see what you're doing there. And he's got more experience than Allen. But Allen, you know what? He might have been off to a little bit of a shaky start, but he's going to, this is what's going to happen. He's going to get his footing, and even though being a little bit lighter, I think he's going to he's going to play some good shots. And I'm going to say, Alan Baudet by decision. Okay. All right. It's hard to pick against Jim Miller. I love Jim Miller a lot. I'm just looking at Jim Miller, fucking 49 professional decisions against uh, uh, younger uh, Nicholas Mata. I'm going to take uh, Nicholas Mata. He won uh, uh, Dana White Contender Series in November of 20. Um, Jim Miller, no. I say Jim Miller stops him in the second. Woo! Yes, I have faith in 38-year-old Jim Miller. I'll never do that again. I, I apologize. That was, that was okay. I understood. It wasn't, it wasn't pleasant for the year. How about one more? The, final, the opening fight, uh, Abdul Razak al Hassan against Joaquin Buckley. <sighs> I mean, listen, if Joaquin Buckley did that, if, so if, if Abdul grabs his leg, he better let go. Because I don't know if you saw jo Joaquin Buckley's fucking highlight finish when he does that fucking spin kick to the to the face. And if he did that, man, Abdul won't like it. I'm going to take Buckley decision. Buckley decision. Yep. Man, you better put some respect on his name. I'm giving him a decision over Abdul Razak Al Hassan. That's respect. He's 11 and four. He's 13 and four. Very close records. Um, you know, although he's got nine years on him. Listen, this is the deal. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. See that age difference right there? Put on another 44 years. There he's 40. You understand? Listen, mm -hmm. Abdul's tough. All right. And he's dangerous. Sure. But uh, Joaquin Buckley's coming, and he's coming. Yeah. All, right? All right? Look at me when I say that. I'm looking right at you. I, I think he's going to – I'm sure it's going to be a very good fight. But... I'm not trying to draw swords here, but I'm trying to, t I'm trying to tell you. I think Joaquin Buckley's going to take him out in the fucking second round. Knockout. I said it. Okay. I fucking said it. All right, Jimmy. What else is up, Jimmy? What else you got going on this weekend? Um – not much, buddy. I'm going to, to uh, New Hampshire tomorrow night to perform. February 17th, 18th, two shows in Boston. 19th, Saturday the 19th, Foxwoods in Connecticut. That's it for me. Really? Yes, sir. You know what I'm doing? Oh, by the way, you know I, uh, my brother-in-law, Edwin? Yes. Edwin Smart, King Cave, at King Cave on Instagram. Okay. My little buddy. Guy's 300 pounds. But listen. Yes, that is purple about the other day. Oh, good. You know what's scarier than a little guy with technique? Big guy with technique. Oh, I'll tell you right now, man. He's so big and strong that he would submit guys from just being in, in their guard by, like, just he's so strong. He can just get their arm behind their back from there and do weird shit. He's very, very strong. But now he's passing guards, he's isolating arms, and he's ripping them off with Kamoras. And on bottom, Jimmy, he's, he's getting out with underhooks. He's offsetting balances. I'm very proud of yeah. Edward. You understand? I do, buddy. Thanks. I'm happy. Purple, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll tell him he said that. Yeah, please do. You know what I mean? They'll put you up and they'll, they'll put you on his shoulders and walk you around like a little kid. He's a big I, would, I wouldn't mind that. I know you wouldn't mind that. But Jimmy, I love you. With his fights this weekend, let's give a proper plug for that, please. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, 
Let's plug properly. It is obviously this Saturday night, uh, February the 19th at the Apex. The prelims are 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The main event at 7 p.m. So don't get confused with pay-per-view. It's Walker vs. Hill. Um, this Saturday night, 4 p.m. prelims, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the main card. Jimmy, that's all from me, brother. All okay. right, buddy. I, I will, will talk to you next week from a studio. Oh, by the way, this weekend, I'll be over at Atlantic City, Tropicana. We got guys fighting on Ring of Combat. All right, so I got my, I'm going to be there with Jiu-Jitsu James Gonzalez, Dennis Bazooka, the great, okay? He fought on the Contender Series. He was getting over the fucking COVID, and he still did well. He had a fucking phenomenal fight. I got Lauren Bracha fighting. I had Edwin fighting, but his Something happened with his opponent, so Edwin's not fighting. And then I got Manny Samurai fighting. I love Samurai. You do? Oh, what? That's my fucking guy, man. He's one of my black belts. Good, so, good. Hey, listen, life is short and so am I. I like that fun. <laughs> I love you so much. I'll talk to you in a few days. All right, I love you, Matt. Have a nice weekend. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>